What's going on guys? If you're sensitive, you might want to grab some tissues. There's a chance we're going to hurt some feelings with this one. I can't believe I didn't think about this. I crunched the, the seat down to pull it out of the car and then I didn't put it back into a good position. I can't even sit in it now. Now I know we all love to buy and install parts for our cars, right? That's why we're here. But the fact of the matter is, especially as it pertains to the Infiniti Q50, there are a number of parts available on the market that just are not necessary. Now I'm talking absolutely not necessary, and I'm gonna go through those today. Now the first one I'm not even gonna talk about because I've talked about it a million times already, and you all know what I'm gonna say. Cold air intakes, don't even bother. Actually, I'm gonna talk about it just for a second because some of you might be new to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. I've done a couple of videos on cold air intakes and have proven over and over again that they just don't outperform the factory air boxes with just some upgraded filters. Check those videos out. I'll put some cards across the top. I'll put some links in the description, but just trust me. Oh, of course, if you find some that are used or pre-owned for a couple hundred bucks or $150, by all means, get them. They're not going to outperform the factory air boxes, like I said. So if you're looking for brand new intakes, don't bother wasting your money on them. Just get a set of upgraded AFE dry filters like I got and you'll be happy. Next, I'm gonna say headers. You absolutely do not need headers. There are a few different options available from a few hundred dollars up to you know, several hundred or thousand dollars. I haven't even checked the prices lately, but you just don't need them. Uh, they don't increase power all that much. They might change the distribution of power and torque on the RPM range, and you have to do some research to see if it's worth it for you. Uh, but the fact is that they are a beast to install. Uh, it takes a lot of time and effort and you're probably not gonna to wanna to do it yourself, so paying someone to do it for you is just gonna be quite expensive, adding a lot uh, to that additional cost for very little gain. What's another modification for the Infiniti Q50 that you just don't need? Let me tell you. you might have guessed it at this point, but you absolutely do not need a ported intake manifold, upper or lower. It don't matter, they don't help. If you've been around a while, you'll remember the, uh, the review video that I did on the Z1 400 horsepower package and talked about these parts specifically both headers and the ported intake manifold and they just don't help the results that they were able to get 400 crank horsepower um, and like 270 foot pounds of torque uh, for spending that additional $1,500 on headers and an intake manifold it just it just didn't get the results that it should have uh, because me without those parts just simple drop in filters test pipes and cat back was able to make uh, 333 horsepower and 284 foot-pounds of torque uh, that's like something like 395 or 396 crank horsepower so if you're gonna spend that additional fifteen hundred dollars and all that extra effort to install the headers and the ported intake manifold to get two or three or five more crank horsepower it just doesn't make any sense to me I'm all about dollars to horsepower a buddy that just last summer he uh, had his car dynoed with uh, intakes test pipes and cat back and made 332 or 333 horsepower something like that had the z1 ported intake manifold upper and lower installed on his car and actually made less power after being tuned on the dyno than he had with just those simple mods so keep that in mind and i'm telling you headers ported intake manifold no good okay sorry sorry it's not that it's no good it's just not necessary so back to those headers for just a second and the reason that they're not really necessary for the Q50 is because from the factory the Q50 actually comes with kind of a shorty header setup rather than an exhaust manifold which doesn't flow as well uh, so you're really not changing all that much when you install headers on the car because like I said it already kind of has a shorty header setup that flows pretty decently the bottleneck really is the catalytic conversions of course. Now on my list of parts that just aren't necessary for the Infiniti Q50, I have two left, and this is where the tissue might be necessary for some of you guys. And I'm excited actually for the last one because it might just blow your mind. So let's get into the rest of this. So what do we got on this list? Number four, <laughs> number four, we'll say number four, coilovers. You just don't need them. They're not necessary. I've talked about this in previous videos as well. Everyone likes, everyone likes the lower the stance of their car especially if you're looking for additional uh, performance in the curves and whatnot you want a lower center of gravity help your car handle a little bit better pair those with the Hotchkiss sway bars the car be set up to carve the corners and run the autocross track like nobody's business but the fact is you just don't need coilovers because a vast majority of us are never going to push the car hard enough to justify spending a thousand fifteen hundred two thousand dollars on a coilover setup uh, you know 
and we're never going to drive the car aggressively enough to benefit from them over simple lowering springs. It's just the truth. Now, if you're somebody that goes to, you know, car shows and and you know really likes to display the look of their car and they want you want the perfect, you know, wheel gap or absolutely zero low ga wheel gap, and you want to you know, control the stance with the adjustability of coilovers, by all means, go for it. Of course, you're going to sacrifice ride quality a little bit, but you're going to get that look that you're going for. Um, but what I'm talking about is just the necessity of the mod because lowering springs are relatively inexpensive compared to coilovers. It's going to take just a tiny little bit more effort uh, as far as the installation goes, you know, they're going to get you that lower center of gravity and a little bit better handling. Some people are going to tell you that uh, lowering springs put added pressure, extra pressure on your shocks and you're going to blow them out. And I, and I was on springs for two weeks before I blew my shocks. That's just nonsense. I've never heard of such a thing. Um, I've been on uh, lowering springs for almost a year uh, and, you know, knock on wood, no problems up to this point. Um, and it's true. It's true. When you lower the car on the factory shocks, they're not they're not made or set up to handle uh, being compressed that much further. Um, now, if your springs are cheaper springs and a little bit soft, they're going to put additional pressure on those shocks as you hit bumps. Um, but it really has a lot to do with how low you go with springs. And there's some like RSR super downs that are over a two inch drop that really puts a lot of strain on the shocks. And I would say you may run into uh, issues with those eventually, especially if you're driving daily and you're up in the north country, for example, where there are a ton of potholes and road conditions are absolutely horrendous. Uh, but if you, ha you know, uh, are, go with a uh, Tain S Tech, for example, like I have, it's a moderate one and a quarter inch drop. Um, it's not a whole lot lower than factory, um, but low enough to still give you that nice look and give you the performance you're looking for. I don't think there's a whole lot at risk there now. Of course, every car is a little bit different. Every driving condition is a little bit different. Everybody's driving style is a little bit different. So, you know, don't take my word for it, but take my word for it. Okay, don't don't take my word for it, but I'm telling you, coilovers, not necessary, unless you absolutely want to dial in uh, the stance of your car or you're going to push the limits in the corners on a regular basis. Otherwise, it's just really not justifiable in my opinion. Okay. All right. My feelings are just a little bit hurt, but I'm okay. No, no. I'm not going to say exhaust tips aren't necessary because, ugh, nice. This one may, however, be the one that surprises you the most. And it surprised me that I even wanted to include it on this video. But there's a mop peeking out at me. What's that, what's that commercial? Baby, come back. Now, trust me, I'm a big fan of doing exhaust work on cars. In fact, it's one of the first modifications that I make to almost every single car, uh, every single car that I've ever owned, honestly. Um, but I've been surprised lately, over the last six or eight months or so, because I have seen a couple of things uh, that piqued my interest, and those are both dyno videos and dyno results uh, for the VQ37. And I'm starting to see that a catback system for this car is it necessary? What? Of course, if you want the car to sound better, you need a catback system, that's obvious. But if you're just talking performance and what you can get out of this car uh, with modifications and a tune, catback isn't necessary. Now, that might surprise you because a number of my early videos revolved around exhaust systems. But I've seen a couple of videos um, and a couple of dyno results over the last six months or so that proved a catback system might not be necessary at all. In fact, my buddy over at Savage Panda Projects captured one of these dyno sessions on video. Go check it out. Another wonderful day at Soho Motorsports. Got my man Sean here over at Soho Motorsports. We're gonna do a quick little dyno pull for you guys on a 370Z here, soon on UpRev. Gonna make some gains, make some flames. Should be exciting. Bottle number, Nick? 346. <laughs> 346 wheel. Dang, dude. Yeah. Evan, 
at Savage Panda Projects for allowing me to use a couple of clips from your video. I appreciate it very much. And guys, go check his channel out. If you get a chance, I'll put a link in the description below. He's nudging right up on that thousand subscriber mark. Help him reach his goal. Hit the subscribe button over on his video. And the link that I'll leave you just happens to be the video that him and I did together up in Charlotte when he was checking out the Q50 uh, the last time I had it tuned up there at Soho Motorsports. So like I said, head over to his channel if you get a chance and uh, give him a like and a subscribe and all that good stuff. On top of that Z making 346, over 340 horsepower to the wheel with no cat bag system was quite surprising. But I did happen to see, and I believe it was at Soho as well, a Q50 with just an axle back, drop-in filters and test pipes make something like 336 or something like that. So unbelievable power coming from these cars without a full exhaust system. Um, so a lot of you, like me, may not have ever imagine that being the case. So we're learning more and more as we dig into these cars and we see more and more test results. It's really just becoming more clear and more apparent that the bottleneck on this VQ37 platform truly is the factory catalytic converters. Of course, we could imagine that. Everything else seems to be doing just fine. Now again, the curves on the dynograph might change slightly um, with headers and with the cat back system. It might put the horsepower and the torque numbers at different RPM ranges. Um, but if you were looking at peak torque and peak horsepower numbers, some of these items just aren't necessary. In case you skipped all the way to this part on the video, which I hope you didn't, but if you did, here's a quick recap of what we got. So number one, colder intakes, not necessary, never have been for this car. Uh, headers, no bueno, not needed. A ported upper and lower intake manifold for the car, not needed. Coilovers, not needed. Springs are sufficient. Most of us aren't gonna drive the car hard enough in the corners to ever justify coilovers anyway. And finally, a catback system. Can you believe that? Holy crap. Let me know in the comment section, guys, if there are any other modifications that you may have made or that you know about that just aren't necessary for this car. I'm sure you're able to think of at least a couple. So let me know where they are in the comment section. Don't forget to click that link down in the description below and check out Evan at Savage Panda Projects as well. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Got some good stuff coming up, so stick around. Thanks for watching, like I said, and have a good one. We'll see you in the next one.